In my 15 years of experience as a tutor, SAT percentage questions have consistently been the largest source of trap answers and preventable mistakes. Even questions that are supposed to be easy frequently cause my students to lose points on what they think are careless mistakes. In my opinion, the problem is a bit more nuanced. Essentially, everyone is bad at percentages, but nobody knows it. Percents are often counterintuitive, and the SAT asks questions that defy our natural instincts. If you are overconfident on percentage questions, you will get them wrong. Luckily, the solution is the same one we use on most of the rest of the SAT math, plug points into equations. But most people don't use equations to solve percentage questions. Instead, they think about percentages conceptually, or just by entering numbers into their calculator. This lesson will show you the equations that you should use for every SAT percentage question, the open formulas. These are formulas that I invented specifically to help my students avoid preventable percentage mistakes. The percentage formulas that already existed were hard to remember, easy to mess up, or just inadequate for the situations given to us on the SAT. The open formulas, I hope, will solve all of these problems for you. There are actually three open formulas that you can use in the SAT. The main open formula just looks like the word open, which is where I got the name. We use this formula when we want to take a simple percentage of some value. In all of the formulas, the O stands for the original value, the P is the percentage as a decimal, the E reminds us where to put the equal sign, and the N stands for the new value after we've taken the percentage. Most people already know a version of the basic open formula, but we can very easily change the basic formula to handle situations where we have to increase or decrease a value by a percentage. The one plus or minus P in the middle formula accounts for the percent change. The final formula is actually for exponential equations, where we want to take a percentage over time. I'll talk more about this version of the formula in a separate lesson. For now, let's focus on the two open formulas that we would use for a single percentage. We can better understand the difference by looking at simple examples. The basic open formula is for when we're asked something like, what is 10% of 40? But sometimes we're asked to change a value. For example, what is 10% more than 40? And this other open formula allows us to make that change in a very simple, intuitive way. In both cases, the original value is the 40 that we start with. We would then convert the 10% to a decimal by moving the decimal point two places to the left. Simplify and solve for the new value n. Notice that the open formula on the left works the same way that you probably think about percentages naturally. In fact, if you were asked to increase 40 by 10%, like on the right, you might start by finding the 10% separately, then adding it to 40 at the end. The 1 plus or minus p formula does both steps for us, which is extremely helpful when the SAT twists percentage questions so that we have to work backwards. Let's look at a typical SAT percent question. Greg pays $21.80 for a shirt after a 20% discount on the original price. What was the original price of the shirt? For this question, we would need to use the plus or minus formula because we're changing our value by a percentage. And the best part of the open formulas is that they will match the SAT stories very well. Don't overthink it. In this case, we are told to include a 20% discount, which means a decrease of 20%. That means we'll use the minus to represent the decrease, and the percentage is 0.20. They tell us to look for the original price, so we should make the O into our variable of X. The new final price was $21.80. We can simplify the parentheses first, which shows us why percentages can be unintuitive. Even though the question says 20%, we end up using 80% in our equation, but the open formula took care of that change for us. We also solve for X by dividing, which is also counterintuitive, because we strongly associate percentages with multiplication. The open formula will confidently give us choice D. But you should understand why people get percentage questions wrong so often. Choice C is a trap. Many people will want to multiply, so they'll find 20% of the final price, which is $4.36. They then try to add that back in to undo the discount, and they get an answer that's close, but not correct, $26.16. The SAT will set this trap every single time. They know that if you aren't using a formula, you are likely to try working the percentage backwards. But percentages are not reversible. Taking 20% off of a price is not the same as adding 20% back. If you keep using the open formulas, these traps will never tempt you. Let's look at some more examples. Kim has 30% more french fries than Todd has. If Kim has 65 french fries, how many french fries does Todd have? Again, we'll use the plus or minus formula because the question is talking about a percent increase when it says 30% more french fries. Also again, be very literal. The story says more, so we'll use the plus. But it's hard to know the original and new values since time isn't passing in this story. Focus on the word than, which tells us we need a percent change and points us toward the correct original value. I recommend substituting the names into the equation first so that you can make sure you're thinking of the story correctly. Since Kim has more fries, we would expect her value to be the result of the increase. 
We can plug in her number of fries and solve by dividing to get choice C. Just like before, the wrong answers are what you'd get if you tried to reverse the percentage by subtracting 30% from Kim's fries. Here's another example. There are nine juniors on the high school hockey team. If 30% of the students on the hockey team are juniors, how many students are on the hockey team? This time we'll use the basic open formula because the question just wants 30% of the hockey team. Just like the word than in the last question, the word of points us toward the original value, which is the full hockey team in this case. We can substitute and solve to find that there are 30 people on the team. You might be thinking that these questions would be easier if we wanted to guess and check, and I agree. Many percentage questions are good opportunities for guess and check because they'll let us take a percentage using multiplication, which is what our brain really wants to do. But if the SAT removes the answer choices, we'll need the formulas. The SAT can also make the percentages too confusing to work backwards. Let's look at a hard question that involves both twists. The cost of a painting increases by 224% from the beginning of January to the end of January. At the end of February, the cost of the painting is 98% less than its cost at the end of January. The cost of the painting at the end of February is P% percent of its cost at the beginning of January. What is the value of P? We're actually going to need both open formulas for this question, but we should start at the beginning. The story involves increases and decreases, so we'll use the plus or minus formula first. But I also noticed that this question seems to be missing something. My main math strategy is to plug points into equations. We can use the open formula as our equation, but we're missing points to plug in. How much does this painting cost to start? Whenever we're asked about percentages without getting either the original or new values, we should arithmetize and make up a value that is easy to work with. I almost always choose 100 because it's very convenient for percentages. If we say this painting originally costs $100, we can substitute into the formula and solve. Notice that we actually end up multiplying by 3.24, even though the increase is 224%. This is another common mistake on percentage questions that is easily avoided by using the correct open formula. The one plus or minus accounts for the fact that we're adding to an original amount, not just finding 224% of the original. Now that we know the cost at the end of January, we have a new original value that we can use for the percent decrease over February. Again, just plug into the formula in the most straightforward way. We find that the final cost of the painting is $6.48. The final step uses the basic open formula to compare the starting and ending values. The big clue is that the question uses the word of. We can easily plug points into our equation and solve. But remember that the value of P in the open formulas is the percentage as a decimal. This question wants it as a percentage, so we need to convert by multiplying by 100. So the final answer is 6.48%. Unfortunately, the confusion between the percentage and the decimal is a drawback for the open formula, but I think that's fairly easy to remember, and the benefits of the open formulas far outweigh this one drawback. Remember that you should be using these formulas for every single percentage question. Even when SAT percentages feel easy, there are likely traps lurking in the answer choices. As I said at the beginning, in my experience, percentage questions are the single largest source of preventable mistakes on the SAT math sections. Don't get overconfident. Plug points into equations. Use the open formulas. My experience has also taught me that the open formulas work, so practice with them and you'll see good results. Thanks for watching.